I'm Emily, the Weekend Mystic, and today I want to show you how to make natal chart necklaces and bracelets. It is super easy. I make these boards, and everybody has a personal star chart. Like, the stars were all in a very certain order the moment you were born, and it's kind of, it's just written in the sky. So, at the exact moment of your birth, uh, you can have a signature of where all of the planets were. They were aligned to celebrate your birthday. So this is, makes a wonderful present to give to friends who are super into astrology. And when you lay the necklace down, you can see where all of the planets were across the sky. So let's begin. Today for this example, we're going to be doing a friend's chart who does not know what time she was born. So we're not going to be programming the Ascendant. I can do that in a separate video because it's a little more involved. So to start with, I have a strand, a 16 inch strand of three millimeter goldstone beads. These are goldstone rounds. Uh, these are blue goldstone. Blue goldstone and regular goldstone are a synthetic stone. So they're basically melted glass with bits of copper. It's very pretty, and if you look very closely, it looks like a starry sky. So I like to use this. You can use whatever you want. Three millimeter works really well because it lays very nicely in this little bead channel. Then we also want to have some planet beads. We have eight planets and a moon, and you can use whatever sizes you want. You can use charms, you can use flat beads that you've drawn the planetary symbols on. There's like, there's no limit to this. I just really like to use beads that look similar, gemstones that look similar to the planets. So it's super fun to go shopping for them. I use a six millimeter titanium druzy quartz for mercury. And I use an eight millimeter molokite jasper from Australia for uh, Venus. And then the Earth is kind of represented in the middle of your chart because that's where we're born and that's where we're looking out onto the sky. So we don't have Earth represented. And then we've got Mars. Mars is an eight millimeter red jasper. Mr. Mars, there he is, super cute. Yeah. After Mr. Mars comes a 12 millimeter crazy lace bead for Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet so 12 millimeters works well. Then we've got Saturn. I don't have a ring on Saturn, but Saturn is a 10 millimeter picture jasper. Then we've got Uranus. Uranus is a beautiful teal color, and so I chose Amazonite. Very, very friendly stone. Fond of that. Great stone for beginners. 10 millimeter Amazonite for Uranus. And then I have Neptune. Neptune is a 10 millimeter lapis lazuli. And then finally, Pluto. A little planet, I don't care. It's in our chart, okay? Might not be a real planet. But in this case, it's real tiger eye. So we have an eight millimeter tiger eye. Then we have our moon. And I have this beautiful little shell moon. I like these because they're they're super luminous and they make a great dangle off the edge of the necklace. So I have that. And then I like to use the clasp for where their sun sign will go. So I just have a regular toggle clasp and then I set a dangle off of it and she's a Leo. So we have this beautiful dangle right here. So we're gonna start. Now, to start with, you need a star chart. I printed this chart off of cafeastrology.com. Super cool. You can load in your birth information, the location where you were born, and it will spit out your chart and like all of this information to get you really introspective for like weeks and months at a time. So just know what you're getting into and, uh, and it will let you compare your chart with other people's and you can or cannot let that affect you. This is my friend's chart. She has no ascendant on here, so this is a simple planetary chart which keeps things nice and easy for a first lesson. So we're going to basically, all we do is match the locations of the planets on the chart and uh, 
put the beads in the location here. This helps to keep your beads in place while you're arranging. And then once they're all in order, then you can start stringing. So I always start by dropping my three millimeter space beads. They would be spacer beads, but this is space. And I just pop them in so that they're on the board and they're just, and I, I kept a few off. I'm gonna put them to the side because I know that this is probably going to be just a little too much and it'll be easy to add them later. So we're gonna start with her sun sign and her sun sign is Leo and she's got it right here on her chart just about this far quarter is where her sun is and it's right next to where her Venus lies. So we're gonna put this here. We're gonna put that right in the middle of the channel because that is a spacer. Right next to Leo is beautiful Venus. So we're gonna put that bead, that Venus bead, right next to it. And then, let's see, who do we have here? This is Mercury. This tiny, beautiful blue aura agate. And that is up in Virgo. We're going to give about three beads worth of space. You're kind of eyeballing it. So then we've got Mercury. And then, oh, here's Mars. Just past the halfway point in Libra. And again, you want to give yourself lots of space. So we're going to move Red Jasper 8mm Mars right here, just left of center. And then we've got, who do we have? Pluto! Pluto is right at the edge of Scorpio. Oh man, I love Pluto. Pluto is such a good planet to have in Scorpio because it's got that kind of dark, they both have that dark, mysterious energy, like preoccupation with death, like those are kind of two signs that go together like peas and carrots. So we're going to put Tiger Eye Pluto right there at the edge of Scorpio. Make sure that all of your space beads are nice and snug up next to each other so nobody's moving around and your measurements are accurate. And then we've got uh, Jupiter right here. Big ass 12 millimeter Jupiter. He's about mm, five degrees into Sagittarius. So we're gonna put him right at the edge there. And then who do we have next? We have Neptune. Neptune is blue lapis. And Neptune is right here. Neptune is right next to Uranus. So we're going to put Neptune right here, and then we're going to put Uranus right up next to him. I'm going to move these guys around a little bit, give them, give them some space. Here's Uranus. Beautiful 10 millimeter Amazonite. Snuggle up next to each other. And then uh, last but not least, we have lovely Saturn. This beautiful picture of Jasper. And Saturn is in Pisces. Um, about seven degrees away from Aries. And if you are feeling really nervous about getting these in the right spot, the Cafe Astrology chart prints out so that you can cut out this circle, line it up in the middle of this, and just lay it down. Like, it's really easy. I might take a shot and show you afterwards. All right, so then we've got Taurus. Her moon is in Taurus. We don't need to move any of the blue beads. We just need to, because the, the moon's gonna be on a charm. She is ooh, three degrees into Taurus from the airy side. So we're gonna move that in. And then we've got all of these beads. Just make sure that they're nice and snug. Got my extras here. So now it is ready to string. So what I really need you to do is take your pointy finger on your dominant hand and just boop that like button please until it turns blue. I would really appreciate it. And also while you're down there, 
if you could hit the subscribe button and if you don't want to miss a video you'll also want to hit the bell and that will make sure that you get an alert every time I post a new video and if you subscribe it would make my day thank you so much and uh, yeah so next up we're gonna string and you're gonna want some tiger tail wire when you're working with tiger tail wire you want to stretch it first because it, tiger tail once it's strung has this very bad habit of stretching out. So you want to pre-stretch it. It's very strong. It's very strong. In fact, do not pull too fast because you can cut yourself. It becomes, it becomes like a garret, really. It's really kind of morbid, but so you want to just stretch, 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 stretch. So I got my tiger tail. I have my crimp beads. We're going with gold today. Once you got your crimp on there, I like to leave a tail because I really like to hide that tail in a bunch of little beads. So I've got my charm, my Leo charm, kind of holding the spot. And I'm just going to start beading. <laughs> 